We're very honored to have our next speaker today. Um, her name is Fran Valle. I actually got to meet her last week when we went to pray in front of an abortion clinic. It was my first time and it was such an amazing uh, experience. So if you guys ever had the opportunity to, to do it, please, you know, like take that opportunity to go. But like I was saying, our next speaker is our sister Fran Valle. Um, she is currently working on her master's at um, St. Mount Mary's University. And um, she's here to talk to us about her testimony. She was actually a former worker at a um, Planned Parenthood. So welcome, sister. Come. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for the invite. Thank you for the invite. No problem. <laughs> so already quick update. I already graduated. <laughs> That was already two years ago. Two years ago, I graduated at, from the Mount. So yeah, that's a big update. <laughs> um, so as they introduced me, my name is uh, Frane Valle, and I am a former abortion worker um, who currently runs a 40 Days for Life campaign, which is the opposite of what I used to do, completely opposite, and never I, I could have never imagined, like the song says, that I would be standing here talking to everyone about um, my journey. Um, uh, so when I was born, actually, no, I'm not going to start all the way back there. <laughs> it doesn't go all that, all that far. Um, it actually starts somewhat... Yeah, you guys might have read um, that I, I was a teen mom myself. Uh, my daughter, um, who was at risk of being aborted um, as well, I was in that situation. And or, you guys can hear me without the mic, right? Yeah. You guys can hear me? OK. So. Um, yeah, I became a teen mom. Uh, she was at risk of, of being aborted. And thankfully, thank God, to the inter intercession of La Virgen de Guadalupe and her paternal grandmother that interfered in influencing her son to give me a statement of encouragement, which is what I needed back then. I. I would like to say that our family grew up, you know, my family grew up and is Catholic, but back then I don't think we were very practicing Catholics, um, very me mediocre Catholics, you know, of course, you know, bautizos, confirmation and parties and um, calientabancas, uh, kind of Catholic. Um, so I didn't, we didn't really know much about our faith, uh, about why we believe certain things, why do we do these, uh, why do we go to mass on Sundays, things like that. We just went, and I went because it was the costumbre, it was the, the thing to do, right? Your obligation, check. Um, so that's, that's where I, I grew up in that kind of environment. And I'm, I'm very grateful that my parents did the best that they could. Um, but uh, after I became pregnant and had my baby, and I was so happy that I didn't have to go through the abortion. I had a scheduled appointment, and I didn't show up. And however, even though I chose life for my baby, um, because it was actually really hard and the relationship didn't work out. I didn't want other girls to go through the same thing I went. Um, I didn't want them to have the same struggles that I had. Um, so that was my thinking of wanting to help other girls and women, you know, um, in having that freedom of choice. Like, who am I to take that freedom from them, right? You know, I can't do that. I mean, I chose life for my daughter, but who am I to tell someone else what to do with their body? 
That was my thinking. And so then fast forward, I ended up uh, graduating from high school, went to college. And there um, I just made it my goal to break all these stereotypes about being a teen mom. So of course I was on, on this journey of, I was adamant and ambitious to become a medical doctor uh, back then. So I needed medical experience. You know, I graduated with my, with my undergraduate with biology and still hadn't planned of, you know, pursuing medical school and whatnot. And of course, you know, what more of a way than go into the medical field with Planned Parenthood and get experience through there. So that was actually my first job. Um, after graduating, I was super excited, happy, and I just gave it my 110%. I mean, I was so hyper-focused, so ambitious, that I didn't realize what I was doing back then. To be honest with you, I'm still healing. I'm still healing through everything that I went through during that time. Um, how, how many of you guys have heard of Abby Johnson? Some of you? Okay, so you, some of you guys are familiar with her, her conversion. So you guys know she has a ministry that helps former abortion workers. So I'm part of that ministry. And I didn't join that ministry until later on in life. And that's what's been helping me through this journey. That's why I'm able to stand here in front of you guys now um, and share what I, I'm able to share because that ministry has been helping me. And I've come to realize all the things, you know, all these flashbacks that come back that I, I, I experienced that I kind of shoved all the way in the back of my mind. Um, so that, that's where I'm at now. But my conversion story actually starts off in a youth group. So something like where you guys are at right now. Um, so my local parish, I, even though I had gone to other youth groups, like I said, mediocre Catholic and lukewarm, um, but then I went to this youth group and a lot of things changed. I started, because I came in broken, I had broken up from my relationship, and, and so I came broken to the church again and seeking God, seeking healing, seeking love. And the coordinators there in that youth group, they're so amazing, so loving, so joyful, and so peaceful that I wanted that. I wanted to experience what they were experiencing. Um, and so, you know, I would ask them, I would small talk to them and, you know, the talks that they would have in the youth group and they would share like, yeah, you know, pray, read your Bible. And so, of course, I started doing that ASAP, started uh, reading my Bible more, um, praying. And then it got to a point where I challenged God because I was already working at Planned Parent, Planned Parenthood already. I was on my fourth, fourth going into fifth year. So I started, I challenged God. I said, show me why this is wrong. Because I know the church is pro-life. I had learned the church is pro-life, but I didn't, I didn't understand why. Like, how can, how can we base this, how can the church have this stance? You know, I didn't fully understand it. So I asked and I prayed to God and I asked him to show me. And it didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen by watching the pieces of baby that I would put together like Abby Johnson did. It didn't happen in a snap. Um, it took that last year for me to realize slowly as each day I would go to work, I started realizing this different perspective, this different lens that God was showing me. 
He was taking off this veil off my eyes. And then it got to a point. It was like, I, I think it was in December of my last year working there. I couldn't, November, yeah, November, December. I couldn't work there anymore. My conscience was just killing me. It was just a burden going to work. I couldn't do this anymore. I couldn't avoid everything that I was watching. And so, of course, um, God called me to be a leader in this youth group. And I had to be honest with the coordinators that of the place that I worked. And for me, that was so hard, coming clean and telling them. I was so ashamed, so guilty already, feeling so guilty of what I was doing. I couldn't, I couldn't work there anymore. And I asked them, like, please pray for me that I find another job. Like, I want to, I want to get out. I want to leave this place. I don't want to work here anymore. And thank God, um, literally like weeks later, a friend uh, from outside uh, told me about this job um, at her, her place of work. Had nothing to do with abortions, nothing to do with Planned Parenthood. And I just went ahead and applied, not knowing how much they were going to pay. I just wanted to leave. I put in... I got offered the position. I put in my two-week notice right away. Uh, they wanted me to work ASAP, so I just left. And that was the end of that part of my, my journey. So sometimes I know there's things that happen in our life that are impactful, and then they just wake us up like that in the snap. <laughs> But then again, each day God is actually calling us, inviting us to make this change or to have this healing or to have this rekindle of faith. Thank you. So the fact that you guys are here, I mean, that, that's super awesome. Um, I mean, just don't stop. I can for sure say that don't stop. He is with you, even though sometimes even now I still have my doubts. But nonetheless, he has always, always, I mean, I just literally lost my job again. <laughs> and I got offered a job, you know, starting already ASAP Monday. <laughs> and I have another part-time job, so now I have two jobs. <laughs> How did that happen? So yes, awesome, yes. Um, but yeah, any, I don't know if we ha want to have a Q&A or, or anything like that, if you guys had any questions, but basically that's, that's my test short testimony, and now, I mean, since I went to these healing retreats, um, with the ministry that Abby Johnson has. Um, I've been having my own healing process, realization, learning. All these things that I was literally, I, I can all, literally, it was just a brainwash. I, we, I was desensitized, something that they dehumanize us. They dehumanize us right now, everywhere, anywhere. They dehumanize us. And for us to say even baby, we don't even say that word when, we were work when I was working there. We don't use that word. You know, you, I don't know if you heard of Father uh, Frank Provone. He's like, when you say congratulations on your baby, you don't say congratulations on your embryo, congratulations on your fetus. You say congratulations on your baby. So... It's just things like that that I come to realize that I'm like, oh, my God, like, 
there, there's this one activity that they have us do is, is write a letter, write a letter to, to an unborn child that we remember from working there. And I guess this is why I stand outside This is why I stand outside that clinic, because I remember this girl so vividly. She's Latina. Her skin is brown like mine. She's 14. And I didn't tell her. I didn't talk to her. I didn't tell her that she could have had her baby like I did. She didn't just show up once. She came back twice, and I didn't say anything to her. Now that I'm learning all these things about how Planned Parenthood covers, you know, pimps and and trafficking and abuses, how do I know? How do I know if she was being abused, molested, raped? I didn't even ask her. And that's why I stand outside that clinic. That's a, it's the same one I used to work at. And I know it's, it's in South Central, and typically a lot of people don't want to go to the inner cities and pray outside the clinics. But I wanted to make a point that someone cares in South Central. So we still have this campaign going on. We pray outside for 40 days straight. <clears throat> People commit for one hour a week. Some could commit two, three hours a week. Um, I invite any of you guys, if you guys have some spare time, or even if you don't, it, it could be count as a sacrifice. You know, you're making time for this to pray outside. Um, the abortion clinic. And it's not just the one location I'm at. It's across the nation. And this campaign has actually grown across the world now. So it's in Latino America. It's in Europe. It's everywhere. It's so beautiful because we're not out there to protest and hate women like a lot of people think. Even I thought that when I used, used to be a pro-choicer, actually, because they also tell us, you know, don't talk to them, and they do this, and they do that. They vilify the pro-lifers. They vilify. Um, so then we're there to, I'm there to give them hope, to give them courage, to give them, show them mercy, be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ there, that they can change their minds, and we'll support them all the way from the beginning to, of their pregnancy till the end and even after. It's not just after they're, you know, once they're, once they're in the womb only, it, even after they're, they're born. So, um, yeah, and also if you guys have a friend or a family member that has been hurt by abortion, which is most likely since I think one out of three or one out of four Christian women commit uh, ha having this, uh, having an abortion at one point in their lives. We also have resources for women who are hurting from abortion that I can offer them or I can share with you resources for that. Um, we've had um, people that are post-abortive that had abortions come and join us as well to pray outside um, the clinic. Uh, one time uh, on our last campaign, 
a lady, una señora se bajó del bus. She got off the bus. She, we, you know, me and my family stand out there from usually from 5 to 6 or 6 to 7 p.m. for an hour. And she said she got off the bus and she's like, she came to me. She started telling me, sharing how this is not even her stop, but she had to get off because she was so grateful that we were out there um, praying and being a presence. She said, I would have wished that somebody was out there for me. She's like, I would have wished somebody was out there for me. I was, this ha she said, it happened 20 years ago, 20 years ago, and she was hurting from her abortion. You know, all, she was explaining all the different ways that people were discouraging her, her social worker, her, her husband, like all these people that were so discouraging her. She said, I, I would have wished somebody was outside there, you know, for me. So, yeah, I definitely invite you guys to this awesome campaign. And there's um, a bunch of different ways that you, you can still help even after the campaign as well. Um, and yeah, I mean, thank you. Thank you for being here and thank you for having me.